as we uh, took our AI concepts, uh, blockchain, and so on and so forth to our enterprise clients, uh, it's not that they didn't appreciate the ideas and the potential uh, that it brought for them. Uh, but before they would embark on anything, the first question they would ask us is, well, what are our competitors doing? It doesn't matter that the idea was great. It's more you know, concern about you know, what, what Joe competitor down the street is doing before they would do anything. So fortunately, around the same time, uh, we had embarked on the study of trying to sort of understand uh, within the Fortune 500 cohort, uh, what are companies really doing with blockchain and AI uh, in particular? Uh, but also in that uh, cohort of technologies, we grouped in a number of exponentials, you know, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, synthetic biology. Uh, Eric mentioned uh, games and, you know, so the concept of gamification. So we studied essentially um, a set of technologies uh, that not only were uh, enabled by AI, but also we thought would benefit from sort of the use of AI and, and blockchain. It's almost like AI became the enabler of some of these technologies. So as we were doing the studies, we went out and interviewed a number of our clients across a number of industries, uh, media and entertainment, healthcare, of course, uh, financial services, um, hospitality. And, you know, the good news is we found uh, a number of broad applications uh, people that are uh, investing heavily in these technologies and uh, taking steps forward, uh, which was very encouraging to see. Uh, but one of the questions that we got asked was, well, you're asking us, tell us kind of what, what Deloitte's up to. You know, so are you replacing your auditors and you know, consultants with uh, AI and you know, are we just going to have to call up uh, Deloitte.ai and you know, not have to pay your, your $1,000 per hour consulting fees? Uh, so rather than answering that question with, with yet more PowerPoint, uh, about two years ago, uh, we created this vision for what uh, Deloitte was going to create with, own, with, with AI for healthcare for our clients. So I want to show you a quick uh, clip of uh, our imagination of the future from a couple of years ago, and then I'll talk about sort of what steps we've taken since then uh, to implement this, and then I'll come back around to some of the research and findings around AI and blockchain in the enterprise world. So uh, take a look. <laughs> Data regarding an airplane's engine is constantly monitored and analyzed to provide insights and ensure that it's running smoothly. The same type of data is available about us, about our minds, our bodies, and our health. But we don't monitor, analyze, or connect it to make sure we're running smoothly. But what if we did? What if there was something that could collect your data and create personal health insights tailored specifically to you? What if it could come up with daily nutritional recommendations based on your own real-time personal health metrics? What if it could help you better understand and manage your individual care plan when you're sick? Or help you care for and manage your mother's care plan from across the country? What if when you had a health issue, it could help you answer your most complicated questions based on the most up-to-date research and using real-time expert opinion? What if it could help you become smarter about your health by understanding the things that you don't know, but should? What if it could tell you when something wasn't right and not only tell your doctor about it, but schedule an appointment for you as well? What if it was able to give you information by connecting different things about your life that only you know should be connected? What if there was something that could do all of that? Meet Nora, powered by the Deloitte Cognitive Platform. Here's how it works. It starts by collecting all the relevant data you allow it access to, things like medical history, lifestyle, behavior, weather, and location, as well as personal preferences around food, exercise, hobbies, and more. Then it uses machine learning algorithms to find patterns and relationships between these disparate sources of information. Finally, it generates personalized insights about your health and makes them available to you in the context of your daily life through whatever channels are most convenient. An invisible force that appears when you need it, making healthcare personal for everyone. So that was the vision a couple of years ago. And uh, as soon as we showed this concept, our uh, business development teams and others were super excited and said, let's get going. When's the MVP going to come out? And of course, uh, building platforms is not the... Uh, the easiest thing to do. Uh, so we had a couple of miscues. Uh, this particular robot is unrelated, but I thought it was amusing. It was a security robot in Washington, DC. You all hear about how AI is going to take our jobs away, but what about the AI that's bored to death with the jobs that we do? You know, so 
uh, in any event, with, with Nora, uh, we had a couple of miscues, but the key lesson learned for, for us was rather than build it on our own, uh, it's really how do we empower a broader ecosystem of partners uh, to be a part of our fabric so that we can syndicate the good ideas, make it available to our clients, and really build a minimum necessary so that we can make success happen in a much more measured fashion, in a much more vertical fashion. Because um, as Eric and others have said this morning, uh, we're really uh, not ready for a horizontal generalized AI just as yet. Uh, but vertical AI uh, has got a lot of promise. Uh, so w what's happening with our uh, Fortune 100? So did a survey. You know, one of the interesting things was I expected that the focus of our clients would be on the application of AI towards automation and really efficiency and therefore headcount reduction. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised to learn that uh, that was really at the bottom of their list. It was, it was an interesting uh, finding, uh, and uh, you know, sort of really only 20% of them said that uh, application of AI was uh, for reducing headcount. A lot of them said they're using AI for product diversification, finding new ways for growth, and really finding new opportunities for business model innovation. So I was really encouraged by that, and, and I think good news for, for all, of, all of us in this room. And then we also said, you know, what, what challenges are you seeing? What are the hardest problems? What are you, you know, when it comes to enterprise adoption, what are things that we should be uh, aware of in terms of what we needed to tackle? And unsurprisingly, um, you know, when we talk about all of these new technologies, blockchain, AI, AR, virtual reality, and so on and so forth, uh, the problem tends to be, uh, you know, how do you integrate that into the enterprise ecosystem where predominantly the, the main technology that still runs the enterprises are mainframe and COBOL. And of course, uh, with that, there's also a significant shortage of, of uh, talent. So uh, not things that we can't overcome, but uh, again, there's a reality around uh, what's possible today in the enterprise setting. Uh, uh, we so took all of our findings and we published that recently in, a, in a, an HBR article. Uh, and the title of the article, you know, the article interestingly is, when it comes to AI, don't start with moonshots, start small you know, and then scale up. MD Anderson famously spent uh, about $60 million trying to, to, to use Watson for, for a cancer use case. And you know, it's been written about uh, enormously about how uh, unsuccessful they've been. But what's not written about is they also sort of did several projects where they used AI for common sense things like as the patients came in, making recommendations around where to stay, what social networks to connect into, and really making their lives easier. And that's been enormously successful and doesn't get a lot of press, but again, is a really great example of how uh, applying AI to very specific use cases uh, goes a long way towards uh, creating value. So we synthesize all of that into well, what approaches should enterprises take uh, when it comes to AI adoption, as well as any other uh, emerging technology or any other exponential technology. And we've uh, summarized that approach as, um, as scaling edges, which is, uh, really three things. Start small, demonstrate the value, do it on the edge of the enterprise rather than the core of the enterprise, and use the power of pull uh, to really scale the edges over time rather than trying to sort of uh, fight the white blood cells of the, the core enterprise in trying to, to sort of uh, create change in the heart of the enterprise. Uh, and in terms of how we think about AI, uh, I think we've heard a lot of terminology today which is very inf informative. But as we talk to our clients, we really think about AI in terms of its applied nature. How do you apply uh, AI to solve business problems? And we think of this as a, a pretty fairly, uh, fairly simplistic uh, terminology. Number one, how do you automate? Two, how do you find insights? So rather than typing through the shards of data in the enterprise and cutting yourself, how do you actually find insights in that data to either uh, be, you know, uh, find opportunities for growth or opportunities for efficiency? And finally, how do you uh, really use cognitive technologies to make mass personalization finally come to life so that you can engage your consumer in a much more personalized manner? Really, it's a, it's a taxonomy that we came up with about three years ago, and uh, it's been fairly um, uh, broadly accepted uh, within our own client base as to uh, how do you classify AI. Uh, beyond healthcare, I've talked a lot about healthcare. Uh, it's also encouraging to see financial services companies and other uh, industries really starting to adopt AI. Here's an example from a, a financial services company that's adopted uh, blockchain and AI to sort of provide uh, personalized financial uh, counseling and services. And they're also using augmented reality, which is uh, uh, really interesting in the way that they're engaging their consumers. Uh, so encouraging news. 
So as I look ahead to 2018, uh, one of the things that I find most encouraging about uh, Walter and Sam's vision for AI is uh, their notion of train your own AI. So you know, we've all heard about the, the dark, dark winter of AI, but hopefully with train your own AI, we're planting a thousand seeds that can sprout and usher in a long spring for AI. Thank you.